Hi, welcome back. I'm Nancy Radford. I'm a coach and a mediator. And today I'm going to talk to you about how you can get communication rights with your, your teenager and your preteens, even when talking is a bit like walking on eggshells. In the previous sessions, we talked about how you can control your flight and fright response, how you don't need to feel guilty because you're the best parent your child has right now, and how important it is to have a good relationship with your child. So let's share the screen and jump into the presentation. So what can you do to get it right, even before problems happen? First thing is manage yourself, because if you change your own nature, so the attitude of the world changes towards you. You don't need to wait till there's a problem to start. Don't wait for the conflict. Kids really do what they see. Now, this is a, a video produced by the Australian um, National Association for Prevention of Cruelty to Children. And it has some kind of unsettling things, but I think it shows you exactly what kids do. And from a very early age. It looks like rain again today. Dark clouds gather fill the sky. Don't know how to talk to you, just know how to say And you make me wanna cry the right way! Go back where you come! So what we do every day actually influences what our kids are like. So be the person you want your kids to see. Understand their world. Try and find out what they like, what they're doing. Take an interest in their music. Tell them you love them. Tell them what they're doing right. You may think that they know, of course I love you, you know. But they're going through a really scary time. They're trying to work out who they are and where their place is in the world. They want to be safe, but they also want to be free. They want to know you love them. And when they hear you telling them what they're doing wrong, they think that it's them that's wrong, not their actions. So make sure that they understand that it's the actions that you're condemning, that you love them, that you care about them. Don't think that it's taken for granted. Make time to talk and make it time when they're ready to talk. Try and show how important they are to you by putting aside some things that are important for you so that they know that they're more important than work. And explain the why behind the rules. Remember we talked about how their brains are developing differently from, and they're still not as developed as yours. So what's obvious to you about why they should, you know, ring and come home by a certain time? It's not obvious to them. Explain that you, why you have the rule, that you're concerned about them. And listen. I love the Chinese character for listening because it sums up all the things you need to do when you listen. You need to use not just your ears, but you need to use your eyes. You need to give them the maximum undivided attention. You need to let them know that your heart and your sympathy is with them. You may disagree with them, 
but treat them like a king with respect. It doesn't mean that you have to agree with them. It doesn't mean you're giving in. It just means that you're listening to them with respect. And remember, it's not just you. It's not your child being difficult. It's not you being a terrible parent. It is a natural part of growing up that you push against the boundaries, that you try out different personas to see how strong you are, to see where the limits are, to find out who you really are. But sometimes there are times when there's conflict, when we have to stand and our kids don't like it. And in the next session, we'll look at what you can do to when things get tough or tricky. So thanks for, for being here and I hope it's helped. So I'll just stop the share. And I hope that's given you an idea of how to do some relationship building and not wait until things get bad. Choose those moments when your child wants to talk and really listen. Thanks.